Hey, I'm back after a short break. Last week was my son's fifth birthday, so it was like a whole week long celebration. Uh, we got some neat toys, um, some for him and some for myself. He's now heavily into Beyblades. Actually, I am also heavily into Beyblades. Um, we got, uh, uh, there was actually a tournament where he, he also, you know, won there. So he's quite excited about Beyblades nowadays. And for his birthday, I got him a couple of Beyblades and then I got him his first bow and arrow. So he's practicing archery and uh, he also got his first drone. Uh, he's only five and he got his drone. I got my first drone when I was 40 years old, which was this year I got Mavic Pro and Spark. Uh, initially, I got him a Saima 5X drone, which is like quite cheap. But I was very, very disappointed with that drone uh, because somebody who is used to a Spark and Mavic, um, it, it's hard to control because it's a quadcopter. So uh, when you take off, you have to constantly, you know, try to keep it in the air. Otherwise, it will just fly off or it will just go up or right or left. You have to kind of control it all the time, which was hard even for me. So you, I cannot expect uh, my five-year-old son to be able to fly it without uh, running into things and uh, it was kind of because when he sees my drone which you know just hovers in the air and when he looks his drone it's quite uh, fr frustrating so I, I returned that drone and then I did some research and then I bought a uh, padded mambo uh, initially I bought that drone for my son but after playing with it uh, for a couple of hours I kind of uh, like it more than my own drones uh, the reason is uh, simple that uh, we live near DC, which is a no-fly zone because of White House, uh, everything that happened last year uh, when somebody drew drones into White House. So there is a blanket no-fly zone. So if, if, if I take my Spark or uh, Mavic out, it won't take off. And those drones are, you know, kind of relatively big enough uh, to be, f you know, flown indoors. You can fly them, but with Mavic creates so much wind that you literally cannot fly it indoors. Everything flies around. And the Spark is small, but still it's, uh, those drones are not meant to be flown indoors. So I, we, once in a while, we go somewhere far outside this uh, circle where we can fly the drones and then we try to fly it. But my basic idea of getting a drone was so that I can record my son when they bike or when they you know, do other activities. I wish uh, instead of uh, uh, geofencing where you cannot fly your drone, there should have been some attitude based fencing where you know uh, your drone will not go higher than 20 feet so that you are able to fly your drone even in these areas but you do not pose any threat either to the aircrafts or to uh, buildings like the white house uh, anyway that is a different topic i don't want to get into that topic uh, right now but what i like about uh, parrot was that it's relatively small compared to spark and mavic so it's a very good indoor drone uh, it's actually m more suitable for indoor flying because uh, the battery life and uh, the power of the drone uh, where you have to fight against the wind. So I've been flying it around in the house and I just love this drone. Now, it's not just that it's easy and fun to fly. There are so many other things that makes this drone the best drone in my view. So here are some points that I think makes it uh, one of the best drones that I have used. The number one is that it's uh, it's a compact drone, as I explained before, for uh, for indoor flying. Uh, you can you can use either a smartphone or you can buy a fly pad to control the drone. Uh, with a smartphone, the problem that I faced was that since the drone does not have a front facing camera, so I cannot see where the drone is going. So when I am flying the drone, uh, especially indoors, and I'm looking at the smartphone screen so that I can control the uh, drone with the app icons, I cannot do both. I cannot look at the drone and uh, look at the smartphone. So it's quite challenging to fly the drone using the smartphone. So I got a fly pad. Uh, which is thirty dollars, and with the fly pad, it's uh, it's very easy to control the drone, just like Mavic Pro or Spark. And then it also extend 
the range so you can go i think 200 feet or something like that though i try to keep the drone closer to me so i can you know, grab it uh, if there is any need or i can reach out to the drone easily <clears throat> another thing with the with the remote control is that um, you you get dedicated buttons so you can you know do a lot of other uh, use other functionalities of the drone very easily i will get into the other features later on um, you can also control the drone with both the smartphone and the fly pad mm -hmm. um, and it's very easy to fly all you need is uh, push on the fly button and either on the smartphone or the fly pad and the drone will you know take off and just hovers two feet from the ground and now you can you know start controlling left right so your kids can very easily enjoy this drone without having to worry about constantly controlling it the the battery is a 3.7 volt 550 milliampere battery which lasts roughly around i think seven or eight minutes i have the propeller guards installed because i don't want you know the drone to hit my kids or to hit the wall and get damaged or hurt somebody so i think if you remove the propeller guard you might get one or two minutes extra but you know roughly you will get eight minutes and uh, if you install accessories which i'll be talking later then the battery life will be shorter because those hardware accessories will be consuming battery as well now that was the first thing the second thing that i like about this drone is that uh, parrot is very well known for updates uh, they have shown us how iot is done right and i consider this drone as iot on wheels uh, I bought this drone four days ago and there has already been two updates. So I have updated the drone twice ever since I bought it. And it's very easy to update the drone. Uh, when you open your smartphone app and connect the drone to it, uh, there will be a notification that there is updates available. Just push on that button and it will automatically uh, download the software in the phone and then push the updates to the drone and the whole process takes something around roughly two to five minutes and i think this is how every other iot vendor should handle security and updates for their drone i mean i cover iot a lot in my professional capacity and i'm really happy to see the way parrot is doing um, updates with this drone that was the second cool feature the third cool feature that i like about it is that uh, and that's where I'll also talk about those two accessories that it has an Opel port that allows for plugging in hardware accessories uh, into the drone. So this drone comes with two accessories. One is called grabber and one is called cannon. So you plug it in on top of the drone and then you can grab stuff in midair. Uh, I did a separate video where you can see these features and functionalities. The second one is cannon. You load the, you mount the cannon on top of the drone, and then you can shoot BB bullets with your remote. <laughs> that's kind of fun. But that's not all. Since these ports are exposed, uh, if you are kind of, if you have that tinker's DNA in you, you can play with the, uh, with these ports, and you can plug in your own hardware, and you can add more capabilities to these drones. I have seen a lot of YouTube videos where people have installed, you know, cameras that the small cameras that you get for Raspberry Pis on the drone so that you can have a first person view camera on it and you can fly the drone uh, using just your smartphone as I was talking about earlier. Or you can put any sensor that you want and use that drone for so many different kind of uh, use cases. You don't have to buy a $1,000 drone just you know if you have a farm and you just want to you know go around and see if everything is fine you can just install a camera or some other accessories on this drone you get seven minutes of flight time 200 feet uh, of range and you can fly around and have a look at the stuff so this is a very neat feature but that's just the tip of the iceberg the fourth uh, coolest feature of this drone is that parrot is also working with tinker uh, to teach kids how to code for the drone which means that your kid can uh, write code for the drone to make it do things that they want to do now by writing code i don't mean that you have to essentially go and do php kind of coding no there is an app 
uh, where you can you know select some features or some you know uh, functionalities and then the drone will do that but that's just the tip of the iceberg uh, parrot is also part of the drone code project that's run by the linux foundation and they are part of a lot of other open source projects the git uh, parrot has a very active github repository where they maintain a lot of packages and applications for the drone uh, and they support almost every open source uh, software to 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 out for the auto piloting of the drone which is available out there uh, so you can run any software any open source software that you want on this uh, drone they also offer an SDK, SD, um, sorry they also offer an SDK for this drone so developers can uh, run their own code on these drones and do whatever kind of stuff you want to do with this drone that is why I call this drone IoT on wings now how much does this cost uh, the basic drone is available for $99 it comes with a Canon a grabber uh, a USB cable a 3.7 volt 550 milliampere battery and four propeller guards for the drone um, if you want a fly, fly pad which I would recommend if you want to use this drone basically for flying and fun then you can get a fly pad for roughly I think $30 or $40 and uh, if you want to expose your kids to coding then you can also get a tinker package which is uh, available for I think roughly $150 and you can also buy it from Apple store <clears throat> But the bottom line is that this drone is actually a fun drone just for flying and having fun with drones. So even if you do not uh, want to use it for coding, even if you don't want to use all those cannons and grabbing features, it's a fun drone just for flying it around. Uh, so instead of buying those cheap knockoffs from amazon.com I would recommend buying this drone because for hundred dollars you get a high quality drone which gets frequent updates and which has all these extra features uh, this is a great drone especially for those who are looking for uh, their first drone as I said that it has those hovering features so that it won't be a frustrating experience uh, if you are getting into uh, drones for the first time you will just open it charge it and start using the drone so I heavily recommend this drone so if, if you're interested just go and and get it now um, and 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 thanks for watching this video if, if you like my content please go ahead and subscribe to this channel um, the kind of uh, videos or stories I tell here are mostly about open source I also talk about uh, some exciting hardware or new technologies which are going to change our world which are going to uh, transform the way we live our lives uh, I do a hardware review as well but I don't do uh, reviews of cheap inexpensive hardware I talk about stuff that really matters and uh, I'm also a science fiction writer so I also talk about uh, the stories that I'm working on once in a while and once in a while I also talk about politics if it is about technology or it is going to affect our lives to, um, in a way to, to, to take away our freedoms or to take away our rights so if you're interested in any of these topics please go ahead and uh, click on this subscribe button